Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Grayscale Gorilla live show. Chad Ashley, how are you, sir? Doing good. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm feeling good. Uh, I'm getting in. I mean, I'm getting in the in the spirit here. It's getting a little, a little snowy, a little colder. It's all happening. Uh, how is everybody out there in the chat world? Let's pull up the chat, shall we? We always love uh, seeing everybody here. Um, if this is your first time, welcome to uh, Grayscale Gorilla Live Show. We try to do these every few weeks or so. And uh, hey, Rick, good to see you, man. Uh, answer your questions and uh, welcome new members. And um, in general, you know, um, talk about what's happening here at Grayscale Gorilla. Answer your questions and talk a little bit about news as well. We got a bunch of stuff today, including a giveaway. We're going to be giving away a free year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So stick around. We're going to be linking that up here soon and uh, telling you guys how that works. So let's see here. <laughs> Is Nick and Chad's duo name Nad or Chick? I don't know if I like, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to go with Chick on that one. Uh, we need, we need like a, like a JLo kind of thing, like a, like a Jay Z <laughs> and JLo. Is that right? Uh, sure. Let's go, David. Good to see you. Cheers from Nashville. Um, Chad, how's your week been, man? Uh, good. Yeah. It's, uh, it's starting to get cold here, which kind of, um, you know, it's, uh, it's that time of year where the day seems like it's over at three o'clock in the afternoon and the sun is gone and you go to work in the dark and you go home in the dark and you wonder <laughs> why the hell do I live here? Why? Uh, why am I in Chicago? Especially why Chicago. In... Yeah. Chicago's at the edge of the time zone, too. So it's even earlier, which I which yeah. I didn't know until I moved there from Detroit. And it's the, it's so dark. Dude, it's so Dude, dark. It, it, like I'll be working. And the sun, next thing I know, it's like dark. I'm like, oh my God, am I late? Like, do I need to get home and rush home? And it's like, you know, no. four o'clock. It's 3.30. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> but hey, yeah, otherwise cheers. it's good. We had a big week this week. So yeah. Uh, thank you all for um, saying hi here in the chat. And also letting us know where you're from. I love this. Italy, Rotterdam's here, Saudi Arabia, California. Cheers. Speaking of California. Oh my gosh, we got to, we need to get the GSG team to Miami. I would love to be in Miami right now. Um, they got all the Art Basil stuff going on right now, and uh, they also have non freezing temperatures. From yeah, what I from what true. I see, that sounds nice. Yep. Well, yeah. well, like pool sounds nice right now. Brazil been to here, Miami before. I haven't been to Miami. I've been to Florida tons. Uh, I have haven't made it to Miami, so um, it's a cool place. I'm excited. I, I got to make a trip. Um, Poland's here. Denmark's here. Germany, uh, more Poland. Look at this. Aloha from Bend. <laughs> Bend, I've been to as well. They got. Uh, let me tell you, they got some skiing. They got some beer in Bend. They got some mountains. Yeah, that's a um, good place too. Hey, while we're talking uh, about LA, let's mention that uh, me and Chad will be at the MoGraph meetup. Is that what it's called? It's the LA MoGraph meetup uh, yes. this Saturday. We're, we're, uh, so if you're in town, come say hi. Um, Chad, Tim, are you... Tim Burbank. Uh, Tim Burbank. What are you wearing, Chad? <laughs> what am I wearing, dude? I don't know. Clothes? Prada? Probably what I'm probably what I'm wearing right now. Oh, Maybe so a hoodie, uh, some suit. jeans. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm... Yeah, no. Damn I'll it. be lucky if I, uh, if I actually <laughs> shower. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. That's all. That's all you need to know, guys. Come in. Find out if Chad showered. Uh, and uh, come say hi. Oh, Rachel's got the link. Uh, everyone say hello to Rachel and say thank you for being our our uh, amazing moderator every live show. She's always killing it. Thanks, Rachel. She's going to be linking up links as we talk about all this stuff today. So let's talk about what we're going to be talking about today. Number one, we're going to welcome all of the new Plus members. A uh, ton of you have joined over the last month or so. And if you're new here and you're new to Grayscale Gorilla Plus, thank you guys so much for joining. Really appreciate you guys coming by. And if you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Make sure you have everything you need inside a Plus. Uh, if you're not a Plus member, we have our biggest sale of the year coming up. That is December uh, 8th. So that's next Wednesday, less than a week away. We're going to have 30% off uh, annual memberships. And for the first time ever, it includes renewals. Just uh, putting that out there. So uh, look for the link for that as well. We're also going to be giving away a free year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus today. 
going to have you guys enter. It'll be super easy, and uh, we'll pick the winner at the end of the show. Um, what else? We have our LA event. We'll be there out in Burbank this Saturday. Please come say hi. And um, yeah, I, I think I think we're good. Let's uh, get your questions ready. And uh, anything else in the in the uh, 3D news department, Chad? What I feel like uh, this week's you know the Black Friday stuffs happening and all the sales and everything else going on. Anything else happening in the uh, in the 3D world? Yeah, I mean, just the tons of uh, deals going on. Our sales going to be huge. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think there's been any major changes but you know we've been pretty heads down this last week getting ready for the sale and this last plus release was a big one so we were getting ready for that but um yeah i mean yeah, there's things that i can't talk about so ooh. i'm not going to talk about those things no <laughs> no teasers today i'm afraid i uh the only teaser is sales coming up get ready for the for the um 30 off sale uh we're also going to be talking about some of the new stuff that came out um in the latest release of Grayskull Gorilla Plus. So uh, we, we announced our sale basically like the day after. So we didn't get to talk as much as we usually do about all the amazing stuff that just hit everybody's hard drive inside of Plus, including the light gobos, which uh, I think we'll have a little demo for you guys, uh, where Chad is going to show you some of the power of the, the, the uh, gobo light maps. Um, and we'll also be showing off a couple other things as well. Um, awesome. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Uh, thanks for posting that. Uh, Sam, go check out the link at um, uh, go check out the link for the sale. And uh, that goes for anybody that has any questions about the sale. We're happy to answer any questions here. Also, we have a link uh, that is at the top of the website. Go to any page on the website. At the top, you'll see a link, and it'll tell you all about the sale, the dates, what's going on. It's going to be one day only, December 8th. Uh, amazing. All right. Um, cool. Adam, good to see you. Thank you guys so much. Get your questions ready. And why don't we, um, Chad, why don't we talk a little bit about some of the new stuff that's inside of Plus, and then we'll answer some questions right after that. Um, Chad, why don't you start with the new wood collection? I think that that uh, it's, it's, to me, the best looking wood materials that I've ever played with and, and just drag and drop right into cinema. What else... Uh, um, why don't you fill us in a little bit more about the wood materials and the wood, the new uh, wood collection? Yeah, so um, this wood collection is kind of a special deal for us because it kind of marks our uh, our first real photo scan based approach to a material collection. So in the past, you know, it's it's kind of a hybrid mix of procedural and, and photo based, scan based, and so this wood is sort of the first one that's like completely photo based beautiful scans of wood that just turned out really great we're really stoked on it and there's all kinds in there there's maple acacia uh walnut oak all kinds of really great woods but what what i like about them and one thing that maybe people aren't necessarily aware of is that it was important to me that we could use them, that everybody could use them, not as just like plank for like a wood floor, but to also use it as just wood, you know, just like nice wood table or something. So you have control over uh, the individual sort of like plank depth, the bump map, you know, that makes it look like individual planks of wood that you don't see on a table, obviously, because that's been sanded down and, and finished. Mm. So you can just turn that bump map off and you'll have a nice flat, perfect wood there to throw on a table chair or whatever so yeah they're really great I, I think i'm really proud of them uh we also got a shout out here for our new plugin called social frame uh david thanks for that chad we want to fill everybody in a little bit with uh, social frame and why they should in install it and, and uh, maybe check out the new video as well over on youtube yeah so one of the things that we've been hearing and we deal with it ourselves internally is that um that you know you, you always have your one deliverable format and then you ultimately need to crop it like three or four times for all these different social uh media kind of like outputs and we heard from a couple artists that um were creating 
uh, square canvases or an HD canvas and then needing to extract all these different croppings after they render. But the problem is they can't visualize what it's going to look like when it's cropped and they need to show their client that might be sitting in the room or, you know, in, in a stream or Zoom or whatever. So um, we made a plugin that allows you to visualize all your social media croppings right there in Cinema 4D in your camera. Uh, as a tag that goes on your camera. And then what you can do once you're kind of visualized, maybe you want to do like a story extract off of an HD, you know, scene or something, you can actually visualize it, but then you can actually create, you can set your output to be that cropping. But the best part is it doesn't F up your your FOV, your field of view. Because as you know, it's like if you, cr if you change your aspect ratio, uh, it can sometimes, well, it will almost always change your field of view, which will screw up your shot. So this plugin will allow you to quickly crop into that story without screwing up your field of view. You can even create takes for all the different social outputs you want to do. It's a really, it's super handy. Yeah, that was something I always struggle with when, like, just like you said, you, you got like a nice 16 by 9 thing, and then you just want to see what the square crop is. When you do that, it makes it basically looks like you put on a wider lens. Or in mm -hmm. other words, you kind of keep the same lens on and then it just adds more pixels to the top and bottom. That's usually not what you want. You want like the sides to come in and just do a center crop. And uh, that just wasn't easy at all in cinema to do without messing up your camera and setting up new cameras. And now this plugin does exactly that. It lets you crop in and out, lets you swap cameras if you want to. So if you like the new crop, and you just want to work in that new crop, you could just swap your camera without messing with your field of view, like you said. And then uh, the takes are really powerful too. If you want to kick all this out for your client or for you, so you're not worrying about crops, you just uh, set the takes, hit render, and it's going to render each version. So we got a quick little video up on YouTube as well to show you some more uh, detail on how that goes. And uh, maybe we'll, uh, actually, I know exactly we're going to talk more about um, light gobos and also give you a, a Cinema 4D demo of Light Gobos uh, a little bit later today. But Chad, you, let's um, talk a little bit about Light Gobos, and then um, uh, and then we'll start taking some questions. Yeah, um, Gobos, man. Um, I've been wanting to do a set of Gobo textures f for a while now, and it just made a lot of sense to do it right now with our library and. Once we started getting them and, and building them and making them work, I immediately was like, you know, wanting to use these with Drop Zone and wanting to use them with HDRI Link and all that stuff. So we luckily, you know, we have amazing developers and uh, they were able to make that work. So now uh, not only do you get, if you're a member, you get awesome Gobo textures to throw onto your lights to create really interesting shadows of like windows or trees or abstract stuff. But it also works uh, with that same click kind of workflow that you get with HDR Link, where you can just audition a bunch. Uh, I'll, you know, just boom, 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 try a different one here, different one there. Um, which, if you're like us and you've kind of gotten used to that workflow, it's really kind of like hard to not have it. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, so the, these Gobo textures are really sort of a, a test to see if people uh, will, would enjoy them. And right off the bat, people were just sending me, you know, oh, thanks for doing this. This is great. Uh, I'm going to use these all the time. And the question that we got asked almost immediately, which I knew we were going to get asked this question, which is, can, can, can they animate? Can we get animated ones? And uh, for those of you listening that are, are Plus members, that is going to happen. I can't say when but we will be offering animated gobos because we did see you know i always told people like if these do well and people like them then we'll do an animated set maybe we'll see how they go see how people like them and people really like them so i guess that means it's greenlit so i guess we got to figure that out yeah th those will be great um it's definitely one of the things i was interested in as soon as i started playing with them and you know i've seen that look around a ton and i i've played around a little bit with it with like putting plants in front of my lights and stuff like that mm -hmm. trying to trying to get that look but now with the light gobos not only is it um easier to set up you have more control and like you say you get all the power of hdri link where you just link it together and now you just click around in your library and you get different patterns um on right on the wall basically so yeah 
Super and we have powerful. videos on that too on, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. No, another good reminder. We have videos for Octane. Uh, maybe um, Rachel could put up the link to our uh, training on our website. We have Octane, Redshift, and Arnold training to show you how to set up those gobos uh, with uh, the, the area lights on each renderer and get them to look right. And somebody actually was asking about the curved. Why, why are they curved? Let me see if I can find that. Maybe we can answer that one. That's um, an octane thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. The way that I'm, the way I'm mapping it in octane to get more control over the offset, it just, it's a, it's a byproduct of that mapping technique in octane. So you, you can get around it by changing it. I think to, um, it's like parallel or something. Yeah, like that. Like, it to like, pers I'd have to look at it, but yeah, you, you, you can, do it, you do it in the, in the um video, but then you right. switch back to the, the X Y Z or the whatever H B H. I don't know <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Watch the video. Yeah, I switch. I switch back so that I can get that control over the placement. Um, exactly, which is what I was going for. Um, but you know, there's no rules to this. It, it's all art. It's all like whatever works for you. So I, I recommend just playing around and and seeing what works for you. Yeah, perfect. Rachel's got the link for you. Go check that out. Um, and yeah, animated palm tree, gobo. You know that's coming. Oh, you yeah. know that's, that's coming. That's going to happen for sure. That makes but I need to go to Miami to film that. So, <laughs> Oh, I see. I yeah. see. That's how That's how what Chad does. He's authentic, guys. We got to go to the source. Can't get no digital palm tree in here. Mm -mm. We go to the source. Um, I spend a uh, week under that palm tree <laughs> figuring out how the shade hits my margarita. He sees what it looks like uh, sober. He sees what it looks like with two margaritas. <laughs> it's just more blurry with more it's, margaritas. <laughs> Attention to detail. You know, that's that's what we do here at Grace Go Gorilla. <laughs> um, awesome. Hey, uh, David is asking about. So let's get into some questions, folks. Uh, we're going to be. Don't forget. Um, actually, let's do our first um, link to sign up to win uh, a. So let's let. Oh man, I gotta write things down. First of all, get your questions ready. Uh, put a Q or a question mark in front of them. That helps me find them in the chat. Number two, Rachel's gonna be putting up a link to sign up to win a free year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. We're gonna be picking the winner um, um, later in this live show. So you can sign up now. Also, if you uh, haven't seen, we are doing a uh, Twitter giveaway every day. Um, until the sale on December 8th, where we're having our 30% off sale. Every day until December 8th, we're picking a new winner on Twitter. So go follow us on Twitter. Retweet any tweet that has the hashtag GSG plus sale um, uh, hashtag on there. And you're automatically en entered to win. Every morning, I wake up, brew a cup of coffee, and pick a new winner. So uh, don't forget to do that as well. Rachel's got the link. Uh, make sure you go in and sign up for a new, um, to win a free year of Grace Gorilla Plus. And what else we got here? <laughs> you got to get in the pool, Chad, and then get some caustic, uh, 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 caustics here too. I think that's, right. I think that's good. Seems sounds like we got to go to Miami, buddy. Yeah, I mean, there's, I don't see a way around <laughs> it at this point. <laughs> All right, everybody click in there. Um, everyone who, who's live. And if you know of somebody who, um, uh, works in Cinema 4D and, and wants to uh, hang out with us, ask questions, and potentially win, uh, do us a favor and do two things. Thumbs up on YouTube or wherever you're watching. That'll help uh, YouTube know that we're live. And number two, tell a friend. If you know somebody that um, is into this, is getting into this, or does this for a living, uh, let them know. That's what we do here. We help artists do their best work, speed up their workflow, and give you guys tools that um, help you work faster, more beautiful. All right. Let's do it. Uh, can I play if I already won a subscription? Oh, Joel, you already won and you want another one. You got to, I mean, you can. I'm not, I can't stop you, but come on. Come on. Let somebody else. It's somebody else's turn, Joel. Uh, oh, my goodness. We have a great uh, little teaser here as well. Um, so, also, so we have a couple uh, little things to show you a little bit later today. We're going to pick a winner, obviously. Chad's going to show you a light gobo uh, setup in uh, Cinema 4D in uh, Redshift, I think. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And I have my MacBook Pro with Octane rocking and rolling 
right here on my desk and I'm so excited to show you guys um, really like how fast this thing is <laughs> when using Octane. So I'm going to also uh, cut to there as well. I'm looking forward to seeing this. It's pretty, I'm excited. I mean, it's, it's pretty fantastic. I was sitting like at a bar yesterday doing a little customer support. You know, we got this big sale going on. I'm trying to answer some questions. I'm trying to talk to everybody on Twitter and I'm doing that. And then, and then I'm jumping in between there and Octane on a laptop with no, no, no charger. It's just running on battery and it's flying pretty quickly in Octane. And I'm assuming That's in crazy. Redshift as well. I haven't tried it in Redshift, but it's like, uh, it's pretty exciting. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys that um, if you want. If you guys want, I'll show you guys that in a bit. All right, uh, get some questions ready. Don't forget to add a question mark. It could be about anything in uh, uh, cinema uh, in, in Grayscale Gorilla Plus if you're a new member. And let's go with this one. I knew we'd get this question. Novak, thank you for the questions asking, can we change the default resolutions of social frame plugins? Uh, I don't think that is true with the with the first version. I think we uh, is that true, Chad? We don't have a custom crop. E no, we don't. Um, they're all set to the the resolutions of that particular output according to the you know Instagram story um, settings. But yeah, we're looking at um, that came up. Per, you know, obviously in, in development, but we just wanted to get it into the platform and out to you guys. So we're taking that into like maybe the next version. So if you have any, any other suggestions, you know, um, feel free to drop them, drop them into here or onto our Slack or email, but yeah, that is definitely on our list for sure. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. We got, um, uh dinosaurs classic this is a classic question dinosaurs mm. what's what's chad's uh current renderer of choice these mm. days um i mean I, so i think i'm spending time in redshift and arnold the most but all three pretty much i'm in there uh quite a bit but today i've been spending all day in substance designer making cool stuff for you find people. Ooh, new uh, new materials. I I have a feeling. That's good. So that's where I'm at. That's good. Uh, all right, less. It's kind of a question. Cycles 4D support. Um, we're always looking at uh other renderers and how they're stacking up against um kind of the top three right now. Uh, I think Cycles is always in the list there. Um, Corona's brought up a lot. Um, and so we're always looking at that. And as soon as it makes sense for us to open up into those um, places, we will, especially as we hear votes from you guys just like this. So we're always looking at that. There's nothing to uh, announce quite yet, but we always love seeing that. Hey, and Arnold rocks. Look at that. Love it. It does. Um, yeah, and here's another uh, little vote, basically, for Corona. Easy renders on oh, that one. Um, all right, let's see here. Create your own sizes. Yeah, we I've seen a few of those now, and that's definitely on the idea list for future versions of social frames. So thank you guys for that. Um, ooh, for me, Arnold's the way to go. Love that. Rachel's on Team Arnold. Look at that. Um, a lot of Arnold people see. in the chat today. I love it. Yeah, sh like represent the Arnold here. David's asking, uh, anybody get used to experimenting with NVIDIA Omniverse? Have you played around with that? Uh, I looked into it for a hot minute, but I didn't actually like download it and try it. But it, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. I think um, I think Nvidia, what they're doing, and just like pretty much that entire company is doing really good stuff. So yeah, it's it's it's. I'm keeping an eye on it for sure. Uh, all right, Team Redshift here. showing up. <laughs> you know what the best renderer is? Whichever one you have installed. Oh, that's so sweet, Chad. That's so sweet. I'm going to get you that T-shirt. <laughs> you wear it at the <laughs> event. So nobody asks you anymore. You're like the best renderer. You could put that on your wall with like some uh, like some wooden type maybe. The I'm, I'm best stealing it. Is the I'm one you have it. with you? 
Right, exactly. I'm stealing that from uh, I'm a I'm a productivity nerd. So like, <laughs> there's like productivity people that would be like the best to do list is the one that you use or the one that you have on you. <laughs> right. And I'm like, that's great. I'm going to use that for this rendering question. The best camera is the one in your pocket. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's the same same thing. We got a question here. Can you guys share your Cinema 4D projects for Grayscale Gorilla training? For the most part, we do. So uh, if you're a Plus member, you can go to any one of our training, uh, almost all of our training, and there's always a zip file. I, I keep saying always. Some of them don't. Some of them we can't share with you. Some of the scene files, they include other people's models and those types of things. But when we can, uh, the scene files are included. Go... Uh, to uh, training.grayscalegorilla.com and um, make sure you're logged in and you should be able to see um, some zip files. So check those out if you haven't yet. All right, let's see here. Um, boom, we got a question about the new wood materials. Sam says, you mentioned using the planks as solid wood at the beginning of the stream. How would you do that with the plank lines baked into the base color? Oh, so, so maybe I, that was I maybe I saying. didn't maybe I didn't explain that in the best way. So the planks are the planks like the, we, there's no way to like take one of those planks and make it a giant wood material, although that might be something around the corner. Um, but no, the what I what I meant by that is like the bump map that separates each planks that makes it look like an individual plank. You can just turn that off and it becomes a flat. It's still going to have uh, pieces in it, obviously, but there's no like shadows baked into that or anything like that. So you can get a pretty convincing looking table, chair, whatever, just by turning that individual plank bump map off. And, and you'd be you'd be better off. But if you're looking for like one piece of solid wood that's not that doesn't have any uh, fused you know uh, planks together, then you could look at uh, we have a few in Modern Surface, we have a few in EMC. Um, but you know who knows? There might be something around the corner someday. You're like Maybe. you're like heavy heavy on the teasing right now. We just <laughs> we just have Chad and his team making so much stuff right now <laughs> that it's like he's like I can't talk about it. Right I know now. I literally like I'm, Rachel's gonna when when she catches up she's on a delay she's behind me when she hears me say that she's just gonna see two hands reach into the frame like this and like <laughs> and like pull Stop me up talking. But we got a we got a render man. Uh, 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 shout out here in the chat that's uh that's fun whoa well, yeah thanks, all right go. this is a super important question here will new members also get a free t-shirt uh so no but uh we do surprise long-term members uh we're coming up on i think over two years now that grayscale gorilla plus has been around and uh some of our long-term vip members um got 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 uh maybe got a little hookup. So um, one of the one of the reasons to stick around, not only do you get all this awesome stuff at the day it comes out, um, but we do we do a little fun stuff for our for our customers. No free shirts though. Uh, we do have at no at no additional cost, we have our little swag store if so if you want like something like this. Uh, and you can go grab one. And we don't really like mark those up and make a bu bunch of bucks off of them. We just, you know, let them print at cost, basically, and ship them to you guys. All right. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Pixar's Render Man for Life. I didn't get the second part. JK, it is terrible. <laughs> uh, I, I have heard that. It. I've heard that. I've heard from people that use it. They're like, if you're in a studio pipeline, you know, it is what it is. It's fine but it's not necessarily something that you would want to use in commercial production. Amador, hey, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, Amador. Cheers, man. Um, hope you've been well. Uh, let's see here. Need an Octane t-shirt war. <laughs> oh, to wear at the office. Oh, to yeah, wear. You can, to yeah. You gotta, <laughs> That's you a gotta, Freudian slip right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Any updates on our thoughts regarding R25? Um, mm. Oh yeah. Any anything anything new now that we've you know had it and used it for uh, you know more than a week? Uh, yeah, they finally fixed the 
the Wacom thing that was driving me absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, so any Maxon people listening, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Maxon. Thank you. Because As that a was tough. Wacom all day user, sorry to say. <laughs> I uh I really appreciate that. That's a big one. Yes. Uh, Ian uh, has been a Grayscale Gorilla fan since 2010. I think he's asking for a t-shirt. Look, <laughs> hey, if you've been a fan since 10, then you remember the great t-shirt debacle of 2012 where we... God, how many t-shirts did we sell? Who in the chat has an original black-on-black -black Grayscale Gorilla face t-shirt from, I want to say, 2011? Maybe... Yeah, maybe as early as 2011, 2012. Let me know. Those are, those are the classics. First and uh, first original GSG shirts. And we like physically shipped them. Like we had oh hundreds God. of boxes and physically shipped them around the world. And I'll tell uh, you, never, never again. Never again. Funny. It was so, it was so fun, but that was, that was rough. Acacia, uh, I think I'm going to put in the vote for that's my favorite wood material as well. And, the, the wood that I picked out for the office here. I'm looking at some uh, acacia flooring right now. It's beautiful. There you go. It's beautiful coloring. Um, all right. Let's see here. Let's get to some more questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's scroll down here and make sure, Andy. Um, all right. Let's see here. The, the t Ooh, oh, we got a little T-shirt shout out. The T-shirts are of great quality. Look, we've all got crappy T-shirts from vendors, right? We've all got the crappy T-shirt from the brand that we th that we liked and we put it on, and we never wear it. Why? Because you know, you're not going to wear a crappy T-shirt. You got to have a nice T-shirt. It's got to be uh, top quality. It's got to be good. If it's not um, soft, then you're not going to wear it. So, what's the point of even getting the shirt made? <laughs> so, uh, David's asking about VDB packs. Um, we don't. If I'm remembering right, so I, I don't think I'm confusing this. We don't have any VDB packs in the library. We do, mm -hmm. however, have some Alembic uh, files. They're not in the in the hub and in like the regular place that you download all your stuff using the hub. You got to go into our like online download area, just because those Alembics aren't compatible with with the hub and all that kind of stuff, and you won't be able to see the animation. Um, but there are some Alembic files that you can go get, like Dust, um, and that Alembic pack that we should put out sooner or later. <laughs> that someday is not out, but will be hopefully sometime soon. So um, maybe Rachel, can you get a link to that as well, like the download area? So you gotta you gotta be logged in, and there's some extra goodies over there, uh, including some freebies from some from uh, some partners of ours. And also, just things that we couldn't download using the hub. Make sure you go there and check it out. All right. <laughs> I wonder how Grace Gorilla will handle that question, R25. I hope fair. Um, one of the great things that I am, am proud of over the years is that um, we speak our minds as artists as much as we do as a business. So... You know, we use the, all these new tools when they come out, and uh, I hope for the most part we're we we give you what we think about it in an honest way. Um, so you know, some of the kind of upfront bugs for R25, and frankly, other versions of Cinema over the years, uh, we try to let you guys know um, when when there's something that could be better, or um, you know, when or when maybe uh, you want to wait a little bit to up upgrade and update and all that stuff. So. Um, you know, our our mission is to help the artist, and uh, so you know, that's you'll 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 get the truth from us. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Rachel's wearing. Wait, are you wearing a original, Rachel? Oh my goodness! No, because we 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 remade those. We we get a, a run of those pretty much all the time, like every every year. Those shirts oh. with the the dark on dark logo. Oh yeah, yeah, but that but not the originals. Well, Team I mean. Wackham. <laughs> maybe <laughs> all right let's see here um oh my gosh i love that we're getting as many questions about our 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 hoodies here let's see here I, um, apparently we need to open up a, a flagship store somewhere <laughs> get the get the one off the, uh, get that pop-up we need with a pop-up store pop-up um, store in la 
Hussam's asking about the, uh, since R25 is released, do you think we do an updated version for Intro to Cinema 4D? Um, we've gotten that feedback a, uh, quite a lot for sure, especially that now that the interface is so different. Um, so right now, you know, obviously the interface changed a lot uh, in, in the last Cinema 4D version. And as, uh, frankly, as a company, as a business, there's a, a couple things that we could do with with our time we can actually go update the intro to cinema 4d and and you know kind of try to figure all that stuff out and and redo all of that or we can actually for our customers go show how to use our products and and, and give people who are not beginners but uh our customers that are inside a plus updated ways to show them how to use the gobos how to use hdri link how to set up more beautiful lighting how to um uh, you know, use all your materials properly in R25 because all of that has changed as well. So we're we're definitely going to start with all that stuff. Um, and I could see a day, uh, you know, sometime in the future when we can try to revisit some older things, but we're focusing right now on making sure that our customers are uh, up and running with R25 with, with all of the plus stuff. And that's been, frankly, just been our focus for a while. So we see that as a, a, a pet, like a, it's an idea, it's on the list. It's just not at the top of the list right now because there's so much stuff. Um, but thank you for the question. Dean, following Grayscale Gorilla since the <laughs> PSYOP Cherry 7-Up tutorial. That's like one of the first tutorials. Almost, uh, maybe maybe the first three um, tutorials I created. And that was so much fun. That was a long one too. It took a long time. It was like when MoGraph was new, all that stuff. Who else yep. has watched the Cherry 7-Up tutorial? I want to see that up there. Need a Grayscale Gorilla bottle opener. Chad, we're in the wrong biz, man. We got, we're, you know, we got to get some swag out there. Dude, I know, man. Like, I have ideas. Bottle opener. <laughs> I didn't even think of that one. That's a great one. Uh, I would use that all the time. Make sure you bug, uh, make sure you bug us. At, if you're at the LA event this weekend, we're going to have some, some, some swaggy swag for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got, we'll have, well, you'll just have to see. It's nothing that you've probably seen us give away before maybe i don't know unless you're like you know really paying attention but yeah there's some we'll be giving out a few neat things in la yeah come find us gsg laptop cases all laptop right case. okay guys look at this designer slash model t-shirt oh man that was my favorite the classic shirt. i still got that one that was fun i wish i saw I, that, that was a crazy shoot i did all the photography for that um shoot and they literally hired models and it was the it was the one of the only times I I got to like shoot photography with professional models, and they made me look great because everything I took I was like wow that looks that's amazing. They're like yeah we're professional <laughs> we're professionals. <laughs> um, you're you're was, just sitting there not having to say anything, just like clicking. Yeah, usually I'm like I don't know your arm looks weird. Put it back this way, and they're just like they would get into to like one of these shot one of those weird poses, and then just look amazing. Like, wow, yeah. you should do this for a living. They go, we do. It's so weird uh, that this came up because somebody, um, I think it might have been, um, man, who was it that was hitting me up? They were looking for the, oh, it was Brody. Uh, Brody hit me up and was like, what was the name of that video that we made at DK? And I was like, oh, yeah, design, uh, designer slash model. So if you haven't, if you don't know what that is, um, can you even see that anywhere now? I'm sure it's on Vimeo. That's I'm yeah. Hoping. Go v Google it, and it's a parody, if obviously. <laughs> if you find it, send it to us, because I haven't seen it, and I've been trying to look for it. But um, it's, it's a parody own. on motion design uh, shops, and it was done, like, a long time ago, right? It was in, oh, like, 2013? No, 7, 08, 08, 09, I think. Whoa, really? Before I left. Dang. That's crazy. Right before I left. All right. God, where's uh, the time go? Jeez. Where's the time? Where's the time? All right, Rachel's got the links as always. We got uh, the link to the merch shop. <laughs> there are no um, no bottle openers, but we got some some cool stuff there. Here we go. Here's the, also the link. Uh, I uh, I'm a few minutes behind as far as where you could find this. So scroll up if you've been here a while, uh, and you'll find this link here. You can type it in, and do not forget to sign up. We're going to be giving away a free year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Uh, we'll be picking the winner here uh, toward the end of the stream. We're also going to be doing a uh, Light Gobos uh, demo. Chad will be doing that in Redshift and showing you some of the new Light Gobos. 
and I will be showing you, um, hopefully I could show it off here, how fast this uh, MacBook Max, M1 Max <laughs> is uh, in uh, with Octane. So, um, so there you go. There are Grayscale Gorilla skateboards, kind of. There's half-res skateboards. Kind of. I have a few of them on my wall. Yeah, I got a. We need to do skateboards up. though. That's actually a really good idea. It's just that they're so they're kind of pricey, and it's like hard to take them on a plane. Yeah, that's the you gotta. We, we like the small swag. Okay, we've been talking about swag for too long. Okay, Volk, <laughs> we could do. Volk we is... could do fingerboards. <laughs> there we go. <gasps> do fingerboards. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, that's gonna happen. Write, write that one down. Voked uh, says, is there another way to get HDRs into the browser with Link? We get this request all the time. Uh, there isn't a way right now, uh, but we we hear you. Uh, right now, HDRI Link works only with Grayscale Gorilla HDRIs, uh, but we're looking at uh, some other solutions. But we hear you. Thanks for that. Uh, Quays this is a good one. Is there a way to get a trial to the Plus subscription? So Quays, we don't have a trial. We do have a money back guarantee, however. Um, so it, whether you join a month or a year, uh, I think it's at least 30 days. You have 30 days to check it out, download it, use it, and make sure, uh, it's for you. Um, and if it's not hit up support and, you know, money back guarantee. So we, we actually guarantee our products and give you guys plenty of time to make sure, um, you know, that, that, um, it is what we say it is. So we don't, so that also means we can't, we don't have a free trial to do that. But um, you know, buy with um, uh, with the idea that you have 30 days to go, give it a go. Uh, and don't forget, we have our sale coming up in uh, December 8th. That's 30% off, and that's uh, yearly memberships only. So um, you can grab it. I think it's like 280 bucks. It's bonkers. We got these these prices are ridiculous. I'm going into a bit now. Our prices are so low. Oh, here, oh no, you're um, going into used car salesman bit. Guys, come on down. Come on down. Zoom in. I need to zoom in. <laughs> lens. Come on down to the crazy gorilla. You get gobos. You get wood plates. Hot. Matt, you just sound <laughs> insane. <laughs> the prices are so low. I must be crazy. I'm just picturing like a gorilla in a in a straight jacket. <laughs> Somebody uh, needs to draw that because yeah. <laughs> Uh, France, uh, Francesco, I hope I said that right. Hey, Nick, why did you stop saying I'm the gorilla at the beginning of your videos? Um, can I be real with you guys for a minute? Like, no, I, I, I'm sure, sure. I've probably, I've probably said this. You, you have. Um, but there, there was a time when Grayscale Gorilla was me and I'm, I'm the gorilla and it was me and it was my ideas and it was my bedroom and, uh, and, you know, over the last 12, gosh, over 12 years now. Oh, my gosh. Where does the time go? Play the, exactly. play this, play the sad music. Play the slow <laughs> old man music. Um, I have been lucky enough to work with very, very talented people. I'm really, um, at this point in my career, one of the things I'm most proud of is building an awesome team. And it was a subtle thing that I started doing uh, even just to tell myself that Grayskull Gorilla is not just me. And I, if I want to do all the amazing things that were in my head um, that I, I had to build a team to go do it. And uh, my goal was to help thousands of 3D artists uh, get their job done better and faster. And I, I knew that 3D could be easier and I knew that you know, I had ideas to do it. And the only way to do that was to build an amazing team. So years and years ago, I decided I am not the gorilla anymore. And we're, we're all gorillas here. We're all, we're all whatever monkey you, you we want to be here. And uh, we're all gorillas. That's our, that's the t-shirt. Um, and uh, so, so that's the real reason. Um, and it, like I said, it was, it was as much for me as it was for, for the team to understand that, that this, um, as much as I talk on the microphone, this isn't just the Nick show here. Uh, this is an entire team making amazing stuff for you guys. So that's the real reason. Yes. That's the real reason. The team. Um, it's, it's team. We're all gorillas. And then, and then we cut to me going, I am the gorilla 
and then it cuts to Chan. He goes, "No, I'm the gorilla." <laughs> and then it cuts to then it cuts to Rachel, and she goes, "I'm also the gorilla." I, I don't know. It's it's, it's a getting, work in progress. It's, yeah, keep 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 working on it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I need a coffee. Uh, Amador. <laughs> Good what is you, a man. group of gorillas called? You know how like a group of crows is called a. Is murder? it like a pride? Maybe is it a pride of gorillas? Know. Somebody knows. Hit us up because I want to know like what a a group. It might just be a crowd. I don't even know. A crowd. It's a gorilla of gorillas. Oh my god, we got so many swag. Oh, somebody here. already hit it up. Troop. It's a troop. It's a troop. Oh, okay. I like that. Pretty good. G troop. Uh, <gasps> G troop. G troop. I want a grayscale gorilla skateboard. <laughs> All right, let's um let's do this, guys. We're uh, about fifty minutes in. We got some uh, octane to show you. We got some redshift to show you, and uh, we also are giving away by the end of this uh, live show here a free version of grayscale gorilla plus a free year, an entire year. It's a uh, it's a full year, guys. Uh, go sign up right here. Uh, Rachel made it easy. You can go click there, sign up in the forums, and then um, Rachel. Do you just want to pick the winner? I, 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 we didn't talk about this earlier, but I'm kind of assuming you're going to go use all these names and do like a, a random thing, and then maybe can you help me announce it, and uh, and then we'll get them what they need. Does that, does that sound all right? Sorry, we didn't talk about that earlier. Just want to make sure we got everything ready to go. Um, aces. Chad, thank you for your Aces uh, tutorial. It was short and sweet, but changed so much for me. I agree. I, I watch it all the time. Um, and, well, when I... Fire up my MacBook. I have a Aces thing to, to ask you. Um, all right, let's see here. And dun, now Aces dun. is default almost everywhere. Yeah, I think that might be the answer to my question, which which I'll which I'll do once I once I get my thing going here. Do you like? Do you guys like Barton's new boards? Barton's always doing hot stuff, dude. And dude. now he's doing that that um, now he's doing that skateboard thing. Yeah, yeah that's crazy cool. I'm so jealous. I saw like the video, the barracks even did like a whole like, you know, featured video on already been chewed. And I was like, oh, my God, I was like so tempted just to fly out to Dallas and just hang out and meet <laughs> those guys <laughs> just to meet those again. Hopefully maybe he'd give me some free board or something. Uh, so, yeah, if you want it in the background of one of these videos, just, ooh, you know, Barton, just, just send? send me a package. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, oh, can you show off dust too? That's a good question. I actually, um, if we have time, which we should, we should head in and do a demo here soon. Um, I would love a little dust demo because I'm sure I'm doing it wrong, but mm -hmm. I, I have a feeling it's a little easier than I'm, than I'm making it to add a little, you know, a little gray or a little, a little gray color and just like use a dust to set it on top of a material rather than make it like scratches where it's just a part of the channel or whatever. But Right. Maybe we'll, yeah, that's, maybe we'll do that if we got time. That's typically how I use them. Yeah. Uh, come on down to the <laughs> crazy gorilla. Thank you, Rachel. Um, all right. Let's scroll. I'm going to go quickly through these questions, and then uh, we're going to jump into... Do you want to do the Redshift demo first uh, before the MacBook Pro, yeah, that's Mac fine. Pro demo? Okay. Well, let's do that. Although um, I really want to see... we got to make sure we get to that Mac because I want to see it. Oh, I, I will definitely show you. Uh, all right, let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. Um, oh, just making sure we get a couple more, a couple more questions. Uh, all right, thank you. Troop pack. All right, that's how that's how slow I am. Let me scroll past that. It's a squad. Squad of gorillas sounds good. Aces is default. Is this a question? Since Aces is a default, most renders. Uh, Dean from NYC asks. Since Aces is default most renders, what's a good resource on how to use it in post or use it at all if you're confused about it? Chad, do you have a um, Aces in post? Uh, how do you do Aces in post? Uh, there's actually quite a few videos out there. Um, I don't. I'm gonna forget the person's name, but uh, somebody did a really good video on it on getting it in After Effects. Um, it's actually really straightforward in Nuke and in Fusion, but um, in After Effects, it's a bit a bit more of a of a thing uh but yeah we'll i'll try to dig that up or if rachel knows it offhand she can link it up um but yeah i think uh, youtube is your friend like there's tons of um videos out there about it um i i it's pretty much all i work in now like i don't really honestly like 
I mean, if we're being really honest, I'm not comping a lot these days. I'm actually doing a lot. I know this is like so against my DNA on everything I've said over the past five years. On this show. <laughs> uh oh, but it's you're going live. You're going I'm gonna. Raw I'm outing from... myself, dude. Oh, uh, my that I haven't been comping that much. I just kind of get what I need out of the picture viewer, and you know, just kind of go because we're so, you know, busy that it, I don't have a whole lot of time to dedicate to comping, but. That's not to say you shouldn't do it. You should do it because it's important. And especially if you're, you know, working in production, that's kind of a necessity. But yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's get into a little Redshift demo. So uh, I would love, Chad, if you showed off uh, the new light gobos and how you're using them in Redshift. Anything else you want to show us there? And then, chat, don't let me forget. In fact, I'll make a little note here. We'll be answering any of your questions, which I know you can't see the questions, Chad. So I'll just kind of butt in, hopefully, and let you know if, if we got a good question. And yeah. um, uh, and then let's also try to do a dust thing because that that's something I would I would love to learn as well, like adding dust. I'll put that Why don't you? Uh, I was gonna say we could do the dust demo on your Mac, but you don't have it. You're just gonna talk about it, right? You're just gonna. Yeah, I think unfortunately with the little frame rate issue we bumped into too, I don't think it will work as well. So I want to figure okay. out that that issue, and I don't have my Wacom, so I'm like, I literally am. Mm. I got a trackpad. Oh yeah, trackpad. <laughs> so that's, that's no fun. That's no fun to do a demo with a trackpad. But I do, I do want to show the speed of this thing. So we'll definitely do that, but it won't be uh, super in depth. It's, it's just going to be a little, little MacBook thing. Okay, Chad, you want to uh, share your screen with us, bud? Yeah, let me fire that up. See here. Okay, Let me here we know. go. We got a. Uh, you are now live. I'm gonna hide the chat here, guys. Uh, don't worry. Please keep the questions coming. Uh, I am looking at the chat, um, and I'll relay it to Chad. And uh, just give me a second here. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. Chat overlay, and then I zoom in like this. Okay, we are we are full screen, my friend. Sweet. Um, so uh, what do you want to see? Go, gobo away. Um, so uh, I don't I don't think you'd need to like recreate your redshift um gobo setup, but why don't you show in general just some of the things that you found uh you know in using gobos in redshift and uh right. kind of peak peak their interest to to watch the full tutorial um on how to set these up in redshift. And by the way, we also have the tutorial in Octane and Arnold as well. And then we'll do a little dust. Yeah, so Ooh, if you're a Plus member, you can download all these fantastic gobos, and it shows up in a little gobo tab right here in our library, right next to all of our HDRIs and textures and materials and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you can set these up a couple of different ways. And uh, if you're looking specifically for your renderer, like Nick said, go check out YouTube. We just put out three videos for Arnold, Octane, and Redshift that kind of walk you through how to set them up. So I'm not going to go too deep into that. So just know that in, in this particular scene, I do have one set up on, an, on a Redshift spotlight that I'm doing not via the texture input of the spotlight itself, but I'm doing that with a shader that I've attached to the spotlight. And the reason that I do a shader attached to the spotlight rather than loading it directly into the texture slot of that light is so that I can mess around with it. So I can grab that texture in this shading graph. You can see here, we've got the physical light. So this is how it's connecting to my actual spotlight over here. And this is the texture node right here that loads up our gobo. And here, uh, the reason I do it this way is so that I can offset it. So I can just really quickly here come in and like rotate it or scale it or shift it a little bit, maybe one direction. Maybe I want to pull it there. Maybe I want to like put it up more on the wall something like that. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. It's a little si tiny. Um, and it's just a bit of an easier way to manipulate it because otherwise, if you did that straight up just through the texture input of a spotlight, you would have to rotate the spotlight around to kind of get it to where you want it to be, which is kind of a pain. So I like to do it this way. It gives me a little bit more control. But once your spotlight and your shader is hooked up via the HDRI link tag here on our light, then it's all set up. And again, you can watch how I do this in our YouTube video. Now we can just head over to the Plus library and try out a bunch of different gobos. But first, before I do that, I'm just going to 
re-offset this texture back to kind of where it was. Let's put it, I want it to be a little bit more on the, there we go, something like that. All right, so let's jump into the plus library and try a couple of these other ones out. Uh, we've got some abstracts, which are kind of nice. They kind of give you just a, an interesting throw of light on your scene that uh, can be used, uh, you know, subtly to make, you know, just to uh, give it a little bit of a breakup in your light. Because sometimes, you know, you're lighting something and you don't realize that, you know, if you look around the room, sometimes uh, light isn't perfect. You know, it's, it might have like a little bit of a shadow or it might have, might be cutting through your blinds or something, or maybe you just want to create a more of a, of a textural feel to your lighting. Uh, one thing I'm going to do here is just take my spotlight and uh, I'm going to widen out my, widen out my little angle here because I can kind of see a corner peeking over. There we go. Uh, let's try some of our blinds. So we've got a bunch of abstract gobos. We've got window blinds, which, which are great for kind of making it look uh, like there's light coming in through a window. And of course, like if this is, you know, too big, that's another reason why that I went through with the shader uh, method rather than applying it directly to the light is I can change the scale. I can actually come in here and just change the scale just like you would with a, a regular texture. So of course, if I've done that and now I need to offset it to kind of bring it back to where I want it to be, or if I want to make it smaller, I can go like this. Oops. And we can zero that out and maybe Bit. I think it actually went down there somewhere. Okay, looks like might be. Know. there. It, it might not. It might not be perfect, but it looks like you could try to approximate a little bit of like a sunrise effect. You know, for those of you asking about animated um, gobos, there is yeah, this you... kind of effect. It, it wouldn't be perfect because the the blind angle wouldn't really change and all that kind of stuff. But I think you could sure, do sure. a pretty good little pass of it. You know. I mean, you, what you could also do, too, is you, you could do the old school method where you could take these textures, put them on a plane and put it in front of your light and then rotate the light. And it'll be, you know, it'll, you'll get some of that uh, mm. parallax. Um, but, you know, it's it's not, you know, it's kind of, it's it's art, man. Do whatever do whatever works. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got these blinds here. We've got uh, we've also got some blinds with uh, some trees kind of peeking through, which are nice. So those will let's get those come in. Those are kind of neat. I like these a lot because it kind of emulates that, you know, look of like the light coming through. And maybe we want to get the light just to kind of peek onto our vase a little bit. It's kind of pretty. Yeah, Zach here is is saying, oh, let's combine the the trees with the blinds. And so I wanted you to click on these exactly. You, you did it perfect mm. timing, Chad, since we have those built right in. You know, so we have psychic uh, tree <laughs> trees with the blinds. And uh, you get you get both without having yeah. to combine them. No, these are great, and this is definitely probably my favorite little piece. Here are these ones with the with the trees coming through, um, and then we've got some caustics, which were kind of like an experiment. And I think they're these are just begging to be animated. So when we do oh, an yeah. update to this and we we animate these, this will be great. Uh, but we have some caustics in here. Uh, oh, um, these are kind of neat too. These like lines, which kind of just creates this like single. Let me just bring my scale back up to normal size here so we can see it a little bit better. So this is kind of nice for that like light cutting through. Uh, maybe it's coming in through a cracked window or something. And we have ones that are a little bit tighter as well. So we have one that's like this, a little bit tighter. Kind of gives you that dramatic vibe. Let me just see if we can put that up on the base a little bit. There we go. Something like that. It's kind of pretty. Uh, yeah, and then we've got um, more abstract ones. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. This one kind of creates uh, these like, almost like there's like um, uh, like slats in the ceiling and there's like light coming down. Uh, and of course, we've got the, uh, the palm. Got to have palm whenever you're doing this sort of uh, collection. You got to have the palm leaves. So let's offset that a little bit, kind of get our light down there it's a very big palm tree <laughs> we probably want to scale that down but yeah it works out pretty well 
Um, and then we've got some uh, ones that look kind of like blobs, right? But the reason that uh, they look like this is that they're supposed to emulate light coming through the top of a tree. So if we grab maybe this one here that kind of just looks like a, a noisy blob, but you can see it immediately feels like tree dapple, like light coming in through a tree. And of course, you can move it around just like we were doing before to kind of maybe find that edge of maybe where the sun is peeking just underneath some branches of a tree. But it just it's very convincing. Yeah, those it, th those are killer because they have like the little bokeh dapple built into them. Like, yep. yeah, and those are begging to be animated, too. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. But yeah, so the, that was one thing that I, I kind of learned. Um, I mean, you were kind of joking earlier when you said, like, we we research this stuff and we look at stuff. And it's true, we do. So, you know, I, I think you might find some other um, gobos that are just like straight up Gaussian blurred, you know, trees or whatever. But you said it, like, the way that sun, the sun comes through uh, a, a tree with leaves, it creates like bokeh circles because yep. essentially it's like little tiny pinhole cameras all in a tree right so it was important to me that that our gobos had that 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 feel and that feature so that it would look more realistic uh, uh, let's see javier is asking uh how do we do that in octane and i just wanted to let you guys know we have full tutorials uh for how to uh set all this up in Octane, Arnold, and Redshift, and they're uh, free on YouTube. And uh, we also have them on a little training page on our website. Maybe Rachel will get the link for you. And um, yeah, if you're a Plus member, you have this in your library, you can download this and start using it. And uh, yeah, just to answer this question, we have training for Octane and Arnold and Redshift on YouTube. Thanks for the question. Ch Sorry, Chad, go ahead. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, anyway, but yeah, you're, so th there's you're just tons talking of, about uh, the attention to detail and I'll, I'll oh I'll, yes, I'll, I'll brag yes. for you too. It's, it's one of the things that, that I love about, um, the way our team works and specifically Chad, there's the obvious first step, which is like you said, like, what if we just blur a palm tree? Does that work? And yeah, yeah, it, it kind of works and people have made their own gobo maps and tried to emulate this stuff for, for who knows how long. But what I love about, you know, your attention to detail is that you notice those things. You're like, well, it's not just a blurred tree. We get the bokeh effect, like you mentioned. Um, or, you you know, we didn't just give you the the um, the blinds. We gave you the blinds with the trees built in because we knew that 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 looks amazing, <laughs> you know. So layering this stuff up and just understanding that, um, you know, tasteful, beautiful maps don't just come right away it comes from paying attention and uh i just love that you do that so i love these and the fact by the way i'll just brag one more time which i love that these work with hdri link and uh all the tutorials show you how to set it up with hdri link so you could literally just go back to the library and click and get a completely new effect and uh that's just something you can't do it's something that i love that i love doing with hdris that now works with um uh, light maps and now gobos as well. So I just, I love that. Um, all right. We got plenty of people here in the chat that just think this looks beautiful. And I, I agree with them, bud. Um, anything else you want to show with gobos and then we could, uh, try to do a quick, uh, dust demo and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do the MacBook thing too. Um, yeah. So, you know, really, you can attach uh, a color correct to this and just like crank the gamma way down. And I'm doing that just to kind of get this like caustic looking effect that is a bit more uh, nuanced, a little bit more interesting than kind of using it by default. So I'm just trying to encourage people to play with them and make them work the way that you need them to work. There's really no rules. Everything is just kind of, you know, meant to be played with. Uh, but yeah, we, I'm stoked on them, man. Like I can't wait to, um, see what people make with these. I'm really excited, but yeah, you yeah. want to, should we talk about dust? You want to get into that? Yeah. Can you, can you, uh, it's something just so obvious that I know I'm going to want to do and I'm, and, and I'm guessing our audience does too. And our plus members It's like, maybe take a piece of wood 
and uh, show how to use the dust maps to add dust on top of it. Because unlike scratches that could go in, you know, the bump layer or in in the um, you know the the blur layer or whatever, I think there's a different setup where you have to add a little color and basically add a layer to it. So can you show that setup in in uh, Redshift or uh, yeah. whatever you want to show it in, just to kind of get the sense of how to set that up? Yeah, but um, I just realized we're sitting right here and we didn't talk about uh, social frame. Ooh, okay. Because this the, real quick, let's just let's just break this down. Because this scene was kind yes, of please. designed specifically for um, for social frame, because uh, we've got a square canvas here, and you can see you may if you if you're watching, maybe you've seen um, these lines in in some of my renders or in my screen shares uh, on the YouTube channels that, or the YouTube videos we just talked about. So I'm using uh, social frame uh, using our square image mode here, which basically allows me to visualize a story crop vertical and an HD crop uh, going across the horizontal here. And then you can crop into a square for the uh, for Instagram post. So in this one square canvas, I can visualize what it would look like. In fact, let me turn on the masking so you can see it a little bit better and we'll jump into the advanced and make it a little bit more opaque. So now if a client comes by and they're like, okay, that's your canvas, but what's it gonna look like for a story? What's it gonna look like for HD? And what's it gonna look like for a post? In one square canvas, I can visualize all three of those outputs. And of course, like you don't have to use the square mode. We can jump back over here and turn square mode off. And maybe we just wanna see only the story cropping for this. So there it is. And I was able to compose my shot using social frame so that I protected and had an interesting composition that would work for all three croppings, which is really the reason that we made it is because you want to make sure that you're setting up a beautiful composition that's going to work for all of your different crops. And if you can't visualize it in, in cinema, then you're kind of flying blind. So that's why we invented um, social frame. And of course, oh. if we want to change the output, check this out. All we got to do is go to our story and we say set output, hit yes, and we jump into, oops, let me undo that. Actually make sure I'm in the right thing. And we can jump into, oh, we can even do horizontal. I forgot about, let me just talk about this for a second. So we can also jump into horizontal to get our HD cropping. Uh, if we wanted individual that, we can turn on the mask for that as well. And we can see that. So really, uh, you know, we can visualize an output all of our different social crops and uh, do it all right here. In fact, we can also create takes if we want to like select all these and create takes. But you know, there's a great video by this guy um, who used to be called the gorilla <laughs> and he's on YouTube and he shows you all this stuff. So go watch that video because it's going to be a lot, <laughs> a lot better than my. Yeah, but, it's, all, uh, anyway. it's all here on YouTube. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you could find the social frame video. It goes a, into a little bit more depth and yeah. also shows you the takes and everything as well. So let's let's quickly uh, let's quickly do a dust thing. Okay, so let me break out of this camera. And if you're wondering, like this is like you know looking behind the curtain a little bit, there really isn't much to this scene file. For those of you that were wondering. Um, okay, so let's just, um, let's put a, we're just going to be really generic here and put a sphere in here because that's generic and let's do yes. the demo. So a sphere up here, we're going to put wood on this. So let's do that really quick. Let me just kind of get in here. Actually, we'll look through our camera because I do like that angle. Uh, yeah, let's look through our camera and let's turn off our lock and let's, actually fly in on this can on this guy here we go and we'll turn off the old bouquet for right now cool and we'll hide oh, we'll just get we'll just delete it because we're, we're not saving this anyway all right so here we are uh redshift needs to catch up here for a sec come on there we go and let's jump over to our plus library materials. We're going to go all the way down to Redshift Wood Volume One. Uh, what wood do you want to use? Should we use acacia since that's kind of the? It the is kind favorite? of my fave. All it right, is kind of my fave. Just, I'm just going to drag that onto my sphere here, and there we go. Let's mm. change, let's change the mapping though. Do we want we want to have two 
in U so that it maps correctly. Cool. It's just kind of flying. That light actually looks pretty damn good. Oh, all right. Oh, buddy. All right. So we want to add some dust to this. Um, I, and for those of you that use our surface imperfections before, you're probably thinking, well, do I put it in the roughness? Like, where do I put it? Dust is a little bit different. Dust kind of requires a, another material. So I'm going to grab another material and we're going to drop that in. And this material, I'm going to push this out to my surface. I have a hotkey for that. So it's just going to create a very shiny white or gray sphere. I'm going to actually make this pretty close to 100% white, like 85%. I'm going to turn down the reflection all the way. We just want like a matte white. This is going to be our dust. And we're just going to reveal this white with our dust mats. So let's grab a blender. Blender, blender. No, we want a material blender because we're going to blend our original wood. And we're going to put that into our base layer, our base color. We're going to throw our white dust into layer one. Then we're going to head over to the plus library and jump over to, oh boy, I got to remember if I have anything that I can't show right now. Oh. Um, I don't, th I think there might be one thing. Uh, maybe turn off my stream for a hot second. <laughs> I love or it. Or it's up to you. you. No, this is good. You, I'm you hovering are off, over it. <laughs> you are off stream. It's just okay. our faces. All right, sweet. I love right. it. Uh, going to grab. Uh, see, I, I could hear. I could hear Rachel. She she's very proud of you, Chad. That you that you didn't try All to, right. you know, tease something. All right. So let me. Okay, I, we're safe now. We're safe. <laughs> okay. We're safe. Um, we're, we're coming okay. back. We're coming back. Coming back. All right. So <laughs> we're gonna take one of the dusts that I just brought in, and we're gonna throw that into layer one blend color. And let's go ahead and look at the output of our little combo here. And now we have an extremely dusty wood. I'm just going to kind of find a spot up here that we can pay attention. Like I'm going to bring the intensity down on our light a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And from there, you're just picking whatever dust uh, makes the most sense for you. So I'm going to hop over here. I'm not going to open up the library again, just in case I um, accidentally show something I'm not supposed to show. So I'm just going to type a number in. Oops, what did I just do here? Up oh, there, yeah, it worked. So there you go. And I don't know if you can see this on the stream or not, but there's actual hairs in, <gasps> this, du in this dust. You Because... Um, if you live with pets like I do, uh, you almost are always going to have this problem. Now, another thing that you can do... Or, or uh, people with hair, Chad. I yeah, mean, I mean... <laughs> Dude, was that a dig on me? <laughs> that's uncalled for, man. Totally uncalled for. Um, uh, I'm just, you know, that's what my floors look like. Right. I mean, man, I'm actually really vibing on this, on this render right now. This that background. looks good. Do we have a post to Twitter button yet? Or post, post uh, Instagram. We should. I just screenshot. Uh, but another thing that you could do if you wanted to get fancy, I don't know how much time we have right now, so you got to tell me if we don't have time to do this, but I could show you how to set up like a Fresnel so that uh, the dust is a little bit more visible on the angles of incidence as opposed to the facing angles. I love that. Let's, let's do that, and then we'll end with a quick, it's a very quick demo, guys, but I did want to show you Octane running on, a, on the MacBook Pro Max. And then we'll pick our winner. And I think we'll, I think we'll go. be good. It'll be like 15, 20 minutes or so. And uh, we'll, call it a, we'll call it a show. So, yeah, I would love to see um, the, the angle. Because, you know, w what you're describing is you look down on a piece uh, on the floor. You're like, oh, my floors aren't that dusty. And then you ever like sat on the couch and then you looked and you're like, oh, I see every little speck. And that, that's yeah. kind of what you're, you want to set up, right? Like the, the, yeah. the angle. Yeah. It's just helpful with this kind of scene to do that. So I'm going to grab a Fresnel and we're going to just push this out to our surface just so I can see it. Uh, and actually default looks good enough for this demo. I'm going to grab a multiply and this is a, a pet peeve of mine. If anybody from Redshift is watching, please rename your multiply from mull to malt at least because they've named it mull for some reason. It drives me crazy. Actually, I think we need a vector malt. Vector mull. That's totally intuitive. 
Okay, so we're gonna take our um, our texture here, our our dust texture, and we are gonna multiply the Fresnel on top of it. And if I did this right, let's see if I'm right. It's gonna be very hard to see because it it's just you know a lot going on. So let's just go ahead and we're gonna change our Fresnel to give us a little bit more uh, strength there. Let's see. Honestly, like the fastest and easiest way that, and this is kind of a, a, a cheap way to do it, is just to like throw this into a ramp because you can sit there and try to like play with all of the Fresnel settings and you'll just be like, I kind of got it the way I want, but it's sometimes easier just to take a ramp and just do this mm. and uh, just kind of get it to where you want. In fact, we don't want it to be completely gone, but it's something like that. All right, so now if we take that ramp and we pipe that into our input one, and uh, forgive my tiny work area down here, but I'm trying to keep the I'm trying to keep it um, as easy to see as possible for the render. So now I don't know if this is going to come through the stream or not. So I'm going to have to like zoom way the f in. It's um, starting to show. You see it now? It's a little bit yeah. easier. So let me just like crank this even more, get a little bit more dust on that. And just for the sake of this video, let's make sure that's all hooked up correctly. Let's go ahead and look through the final material blender. And, whoa, Jesus, that light is bright. Um, let's toss in a some some bouquet, just because you know you're that close. You're gonna want to see that. Let's grab our camera, and I don't have a focal object here, so I'm just gonna do this. You'll click. And there oh, you go. Oh, buddy. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Okay, and then it, there's more on the edge, obviously. And then if you if you kind of zoomed out a little and showed the front facing, that's kind of yeah. what you're setting up, where the front yeah, is but... less, and then, and then it's yeah. more as it goes along the edge. Well, it would help if I connected that node, <laughs> which I didn't do. So let's connect that node because that would actually help. So that a lot of this dust is going to go away, right? But as soon as we go over to the side, you can see if we actually grab our little thingy here, the dust mm -hmm. is there. That's and great. let's go ahead and change our lens so that it's a little bit less depth of field. So yeah, so now you're getting more of that dust on the sides you know, of the object, just like you would. Let me turn off the depth of field so you can actually see what's going on. So now we're seeing more of that dust built up over here. If we grab like a, 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 a dust um, texture that has a little bit more dust, I think it's like 20 had quite a bit. This will be a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's a lot more. Yeah, so it's a little bit Ooh. more obvious there. So now that's, that's beautiful can, and gross. I love that. Yeah, there's even some dust with some uh, hand and fingerprints and stuff like that, you know, where you people have touched it and stuff like that. And there's ones with more or less hair and bits, bits of skin because that's really what dust is made of. I'm kidding about that last part. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be true, folks, but it's getting gross. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. Um, but anyway, gross. Yeah, that's the attention to detail from Chad right there. See that? That's the kind of science that Chad gets into. What is yep. this stuff actually made of? So really, that shouldn't be like a white. Uh, maybe it's like a more of a. Yeah, add a little subsurface sub scattering to that. <laughs> to I that mean, that be, might there. be a little, might be a little overkill. Uh, oh, <laughs> but getting to what we were talking about before with the uh, with the wood, um, you can actually uh, turn off that layer. I don't know if it's going to come through the stream or not, but let me just kind of zoom in here. So um, if you can see here, the planks have absolutely no bump on them right now. And you can control that with layer one of this little bump under that's taking that bump texture and allows you to kind of bring in that individual plank, uh, little mm. beveled edge if you want it, or you can turn it all the way off to just get like a, a fused kind of wood vibe. That's beautiful. All right, send it. Send it to Instagram. That's that's pretty. You yeah, works out. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Uh, all right, uh, I think I got all the questions there for that one. Thank you, Chad, for the um, Gobos demo. 
think you I think you did a the the quadrifecta. You got a wood in there, you got the dust, you got the social frame and gobos, which are all the new things we just launched yep. in uh Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So thanks, man. That worked that worked perfect. Look how yeah. look how pretty that is. Screw the vase, man. You just need a sphere set there. What are you, what are you <laughs> just, thinking about? Well, I think you're a little biased towards spheres, but I mean, I'm kind of a kind of a fan. <laughs> you're <a> fish, aficionado. <laughs> all right. Well, why don't we take a break from all this really, you know, photorealistic looking stuff and just watch a couple like shiny uh, orbs spin around in Octane uh, on my MacBook um, Pro. So a few weeks back. Um, I told you guys I was going to get the, or I ordered the Mac, uh, I always get the name wrong. It's MacBook Pro Max that is maxed out. So it's got the highest chip and all the RAM and everything. Took a little bit longer to get uh, delivered, but it's finally here. I uh, installed Octane. I installed Cinema 4D R25. And I've been blown away by... Um, the the relative speed of this thing now it's not as fast as my you know my uh, my Puget machine and with two thirty nineties and all that stuff like if I'm gonna render uh, and really put a sequence down and, and do two hundred frames I'm I'm gonna probably want to do it here um, on on the big machine uh, however to sit in at uh, at like a cafe or at like a bar stool and play in Octane and actually get real time results and be able to adjust lights and do look dev and all that stuff on a laptop was, it's fascinating. So I just wanted to give you guys a little sense of it. I know there's plenty of YouTube videos out there, uh, but this way, if you guys have any questions about it or want me to try something, just let me know. And I just wanted to show you really how how fast this thing is. So let me share my screen now. And um, I'll, I'll go full screen here for just, just a second. Something we noticed um, when, when I was showing Chad this through the screen here is the frame rate wasn't as fast as what's on my machine. So I think what happens is when I move around, it, it actually slows down the screen sharing so that the GPU can just focus most of its effort on the screen. So let me mm. show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. So I'm moving, I'm moving around here. That's actually pretty you, smooth, dude. And you can see it's what maybe five frames a second or something like that. Yeah. If I'm moving it, it's better and than then that. It was better than that. Yeah, better than yeah. earlier. So I'm better. gonna hit. I'm gonna hit play, and uh, you guys can see it's uh, kind of animating through. And when I hit pause, you'll see it start to um, clean up really quickly. And you know, there's some compression artifacts and all that stuff. But I did want to show you, like, see when I hit play, it kind of drops down in frame rate, mm -hmm. like. I wanted to kind of show you guys uh, through my screen, actually. Let me let me do this. So if you look here, that's what it looks like to me. It's way faster. Is that focusing? Yeah, Sorry, move, move your head out of the way. And it oh, should probably... There it goes. Thing. Yeah, there it goes. So you see how... That's actually that pretty... Is? That's impressive. So I, it's kind of hard to move it around for you guys, but you can see it's like 15 frames a second or 10 frames... Like, and it's picking up. And as soon as I hit like a uh, space bar or whatever to pause it, uh, it's kind of hard to do without the trackpad here. It starts to refine. This is the worst screen share ever. Got. <laughs> Gee, it's totally out of focus. Yeah. You can just What's, go back what, to the, the con connected or whatever. Yeah, I'll just go back to this dude right here. Bonk. And um, you can see moving around. So, you know, zooming in. And kind of getting more of an angle and fo using the focus tool, you can see it refines really quickly. Um, and like I said, sitting there and doing um, look dev, trying different ideas, just kind of playing around on on a laptop with without the fans really moving. Like I, I was I was telling Chad earlier, it takes Octane at full speed for minutes and minutes before the fan even kicks on. It eventually does because I think it's one of the most, you know, uh, kind of process heavy things you could do on these new chips is just like crank the GPU. And and all these renders are so good at taking every little bit of GPU you could throw at it uh, that eventually it, it it speeds the fan up. But it, even when it's on, it's not loud or anything like that. So a few questions. I This is the 14 inch, but you could still get the maxed out chip on the 14 inch, which I'm super excited about. Uh, I could travel with this thing. 
Um, and it is no bigger than my old 13 inch MacBook, um, uh, whatever they call that MacBook the Pro, Air? I guess it was. No, I, I had like the 2015 old school one with like the regular USB <laughs> A on it and everything. Mm, and I just never okay. let it go until this thing came out. So it's about the same size and uh, it is super, super fast. So um, yeah, we the VRAM is crazy. You got all the RAM cranked into this thing. And let's see here. I'm just excited. Um, you know, I... I, I, the, the PCs have come such a long way and I think windows has come a long way. And you know, I, I, I like to make fun of all that stuff. I love, I love my machine. I love my big old 3090s and cranking and I've been making a lot of stuff and learning a lot lately. Um, and I don't see giving that up necessarily, like I said, but you know, I'm going to be on a plane tomorrow going to LA and I could do what you're seeing on my screen in a plane <laughs> in the sky. Which is, I, which just fascinates me. I don't know. That like, is crazy. Look at, look I have some questions for is. you. Yeah, yeah, hit me up. So, have you connected it to your main monitor and like used it all day? Uh, like, I have replaced your daily driver. I have not, and, and the, the main reason is is I don't. I I'm currently coming to you live on a Mac M1 um, iMac. And there's no input on on an iMac, or else oh, I, see, would, I would give okay. it a go. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, I would be curious to hear like you use it for a week and like just you know see if it's good enough for look dev and you know just doing the daily work because I I feel like that's what's intriguing the most is like is this? I mean, obviously you're not going to use it for final frame rendering or large sequence rendering. Um, but for doing look dev, I want to know, like, is it, is it possible to like use it and not really miss the, the giant uh, PC? Yeah, I, I have a feeling, well, already I'll tell you, um, I have not really installed cinema 40 on my iMac, which, which, uh, if you guys don't know, I use my iMac on my Gmail and kind of my day to day, you know, um, work that's not 3d and as soon as i do any 3d i jump over through parsec to my uh puget machine and use all my all my craziness over there um and that's that's my workflow and so for me if i could easily just replace that and and not have to hunch over a laptop which is the only reason i wouldn't do it now is like i got my like screen set up nice and i got my standing desk and the whole deal but if i had a monitor sitting here i would i would switch it right now and a lot of people, by the That's way, are saying. doing that. Yeah, like, would you get a dock? Like, get I have a dock at home that I use with my MacBook Air, and it, you know, you just connect one cable, and you can just plug in and like get all your peripherals. Yeah, I think, um, like, I, I, if I were if I were ridiculous, maybe maybe I am ridiculous. I would get like a big old monitor and hook up this laptop and make that my day to day. You know, or just send it and, to me. I'll do it for you. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's so yeah. nice of you, Chad. I know. Oh, I, thanks, I, man. For you, I will do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's asking about dynamics or doing something a little bit more computationally heavy. So I'll do the the um the demo I do, you know, basically the, <laughs> the same demo I've been doing for 12 years, guys. Um which subdivide is... the shit out of that sphere. Which is uh, see what dynamics look like live. Oh, I could also do that. That's probably even quicker. But I basically try to break it as I crank up the amount of clones that basically are moving around. So I know this is not a lot of clones, but I'm going to get this working first. And then uh, we're going to pick our winner, guys. So don't forget to sign up to um, win a free year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And uh, Rachel will get the link out there, and we'll pick a winner here any moment. So, um, yeah, just real quickly here, like I said, same old demo. Basically, the thing that made me go like, well, I don't know what that is, but I'm using that. I'm learning that software. And so we got our plane. We got our simulation collider body. We got our simulation sphere. We got a rigid body. And we hit play. 
And uh, we've got to speed up our time here. Let's go ahead and do uh, dynamics and speed up our time scale 300%. That'll work. And now we basically crank it up till it breaks. Well, I don't know what, I don't know what we'll, we'll add do some here. subdivisions to that, those spheres. I want to see like and add subs. Yeah. All right. We're at, uh, we're at 90. We're at, let's just crank it up 99 segments. Oh, I, I did the thing where I moved my mouse out. And now we got, let's just do 10 by 10 by 10. We can do the math nice and easy. This is, by the way, okay, it, it is actually showing pretty good, um, I think, because it's CPU and not GPU. The frame rate's looking pretty good on your side, correct? Yeah, it looks great. Like, it's it's fascinating, like, how fast this is. And again, I know um, a, thousand, uh, a thousand spheres really isn't crazy anymore, yeah, but let's... You want to break it, it, turn off, in, put it in instance mode, not multi-instance, then it's going to probably die. Yeah, the multi-instance saves it for sure. So this is multi-instance at 20 by 20 by 10. And that's about the frame rate I'm getting to, what you guys are seeing. So usable as heck. Um, I'm not going to click render instance because I know what happens. <laughs> 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 I know it will be much, much slower. But that stuff is fascinating to me to be able to do this. Again, on a laptop, the fans are not running. And the frame rate I'm getting is really, really reasonable here. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, forgot who uh, asked that one. Oh, it's Sam. right there, Sam. Thanks, Sam. All right, uh, let's uh, remind everybody that you can also go get Octane X for free if you have a Mac. Uh, you just go to the App Store on your Mac and go download um, Octane X. It's, it's, and you can go try this stuff right in the, um, what do they call it, the standalone version of Octane. And so if you have one of these new M1 machines, go do that um it's tempting uh, stuff dude it's tempting it's pretty crazy uh all right just making sure there's no other um i have done soft bodies same thing it's just you know basically a little bit slower just like it is on any machine but it's really usable like totally usable um instead of subdividing use the subdivision oct octane tag all gpu i do that adam i try to when i remember um all right. So I'm, is that little spot on the top where the notch is? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's do that, and then we'll then we'll switch to our faces here. So um, when you screen share or when you do a screenshot, it obviously doesn't. It, it kind of ignores the notch and gives you a full screenshot. But you can see right up there. Uh, is, is my mouse showing? No. Mm, my, no. My, my mouse. Okay. I'm on my machine. Now it is. Yeah. So up here, right there is where the notch is and uh, the mouse just goes behind the notch as you can see and right here it actually takes so much space that look at how like this this only has one letter this oh this whole God. thing here splines i think it is uh even all the way down here we have our our uh, uh grayscale gorilla uh menu here there it is and it says gre so obviously hmm. with programs like this that have a ton of tabs it's a little cramped up there and I've seen there's some tools that people have to kind of manage this. Um, but I'm a shift C person, you know, I don't, I, I almost never go up here unless I'm like saving stuff or going to my windows, whatever. So, um, I, I tend to shift C everything and try to not remember what all these, all these tabs are. So hmm. it may bug you, it may not, but that's, that's what it looks like. That's awesome. all right. Any, any last questions here? 12 years of falling shiny balls. Thank you, Joel. That's uh, <laughs> be on my tombstone. Um, all right. Yeah, fast. Okay, can, can it mine Ethereum? They, I think the uh, fans will spin up if we're if we're if we're doing that. Yeah, uh, you can go uh, download Octane X right in the App Store. Pretty, it's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. I think it is working. I'm on Monterey and I'm running. I'm running um, uh, Octane here, so I think it is compatible, guys. Okay, thanks for the question. Giveaway. Let's do this giveaway. Let's uh, say goodbye to Mr. Mac here. We're we're back. Oh, hold on, almost. There hey! Oh my goodness! Look at the hairdo. Oh, I cannot wait. Look okay. how dark it is now. <laughs> <laughs> when I started this, I had to like shut the blinds because it was bright, and now it's like dark. Chad added some gobos behind him just to kind of show off some of the new. So, gotta have good dust, lighting little dust on the floor 
Uh, all right, folks, let's do it. It's the big giveaway. Let's do one last round here. Uh, Rachel, uh, throw up that link. You have two minutes to sign up to win a free year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And don't forget, um, we're doing all of this to let you know that we're having our biggest sale of the year, December 8th, where we're ha uh, you can get uh, a year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus for 30% off. I think it's like 280 bucks. And uh, for an entire year of not a, only everything we just showed you, but everything that we've ever created here at Grayscale Gorilla. Um, and so you can sign up for your first year for $280 on December 8th. Um, and for the first time ever, if, you've renew, if you're renewing around December, November, um, we're also including uh, renewals. So if you bought during last year's sale, uh, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to hook you, hook you guys up. Um, okay. Here we go. Everybody, we got the links. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, oh, 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 everyone's, everyone's clicking. Uh, good luck, everybody. Good. Let's, um, let's see if there's, uh, we, got a, we got a quick question I can answer just in five seconds. So let's do that as everybody fills out the form. What's a good entry-level free or cheap render to use for Cinema 4D to get a taste of it? Uh, Ellis, I think, is the name. I would say uh, pick any one that you're interested in and go get the demo. So, um, there's no need to, uh, you know, just grab whatever's free or, or I don't even know of like a free one that I could even recommend. Um, I would say go grab the Octane demo, go grab a Redshift demo. I think everybody, uh, Arnold, uh, Corona, everything has a demo. Usually it's watermarked, but you can essentially set it up and for free use it and learn it and um, see, if, see if it works the way you do. And then if it does... There's, you know, inexpensive ways to get into most of these uh, renderers as well. So I, I would start with the the free version, the demo version, and then once you actually start using it in production, well, you know, pay for your software and go go grab it. None of them are overly crazy expensive. So anything else to add to that, Chad? Yeah, go try it. Go try them out. Just go try. I them. would definitely try them out because you never know which one you're gonna vibe with. Go try them. All right. And just in case the sale, don't forget if you don't win uh, today, first of all, thank you guys so much for um, uh, signing up and coming here to the show. We're going to wrap up here in just a few minutes. Uh, thank you so much, Rachel, for hooking us up with the links and for uh, picking this winner here in just a minute. I'm going to give you just a couple extra minutes to sign up. Uh, and again, if you don't win, um, there's uh, one more way to win, which is over on our Twitter page. We're giving away a free year every day until the sale on December 8th. All you have to do is retweet any tweet that has uh, our little hashtag GSG plus sale on it. Automatically entered to win. And every day we pick a new winner. And uh, again, it's all to celebrate the biggest sale of the year for us, which is December 8th, where we hope hopefully we'll see you guys. If you're not already a member, come join and get all these awesome tools. We uh, helped you guys, um, helped we created to help you guys do your work. All right. Uh, Corona is free. Ian says, there you go. Um, awesome. Let's see here. Corona, we re Arnold. Are we doing it? I think we're ready. Who's ready? All right, Rachel, do oh, you, yeah. you want to do, you want to do the honors and, uh, uh, pick a winner? Um, and, uh, why don't you just post the name right here in the chat? And then we're, we're, Chad and I are just going to go crazy. Is that okay? Is, is Rachel digging, digging that idea? Yeah, I'm waiting for her to get. She's on the couch. I'm waiting for her to uh, signal to me when she catches up. Oh, Ra Rachel, you want to come uh, announce it live on air? Rachel, oh, you, you want to come and <laughs> she's gonna. <laughs> you want to come announce the winner? Yeah, she's coming. Oh, sweet! Holy crap! 167 entries. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody so so much for showing up here. Um, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button and all that fun stuff. Um, so next time we go live or next time we have uh, tutorials out, you, it'll it'll show up for you guys. All right, Rachel, they are uh, screaming your name. And uh, I think we're ready to hear the winner of a free year of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Rachel, give it, give us. <laughs> it's just because I have the free stuff. <laughs> The winner, and the winner is uh, Josh Fryer. Josh, pew, pew, pew. 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 
<laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Josh, you around? Uh, Josh, hit up Rachel in the chat, and we will get you hooked up. Um, uh, Josh, if you're if you're here, if you're not here, whatever it is, hit us up through support or right here on the chat. We'll uh, kind of get a DM thing going, and we will get your email and we will set you up. Thank you guys. Look at you know how nice everybody is. Congrats, yeah. congrats, Josh. Everybody's so nice. You guys are so great. Is it? Uh, you guys are so nice. Um, all right. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rachel, for, uh, getting all this together. Chad, thanks for the demo. That was incredible. And, uh, and to you guys, uh, thank you for showing up. It wouldn't be a live show. It'd just be me and Chad, uh, talking to each other. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh you know, um, and I'd still be asking them about dust, but it was a lot more fun with your questions. So thank you so much. Uh, do not forget next week, this Wednesday, uh, less than a week from now, is our uh, sale. Uh, you can learn more at our website and um, hopefully see you there. Join Plus and get all of this new stuff, including everything else we've ever created here at Grayscale Gorilla. Put it on your hard drive. Get to work. Uh, and cheers to all of you. Uh, things get a little quiet. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, customer support's here. Everybody's here to get you going. But after we try to have the sale and then take a little bit of a break as a team. Team's been hard at work creating all this beautiful stuff. And we try to take the holidays off just a little bit. And I uh, hope you do the same. I uh, hope you have a great holiday. And I'm sure we'll see you uh, before all that. But uh, as we as we ramp into all of these uh, kind of holiday times for us, hope you guys are staying uh, safe, staying healthy, staying creative. And thank you, as always, for joining us here at the uh, Grace Go Gorilla Live Show. Chad, anything else you want to you wanna add before we take off? See you in Burbank this Saturday. <laughs> See you in Burbank. said, "Are you streaming in LA?" No, no, we are. We are. <laughs> no, we are. Uh, we are uh, fist bumps, hugs if you want them, hugs if it's safe. We're gonna see how all that is. We're gonna we're gonna play things safe, but we will be there. I I have not seen many of you in so long. I am so excited. If you're in LA, please come say hi at the Mograth meetup. And uh, um, that's it. I think we did it. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, happy holidays, happy sale day next Wednesday, and we will see you in another Grayskull Gorilla video real soon. Bye, Bye. everybody. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Nick. Bye, y'all. Bye.